See this? This unassuming canister contains one of the world's most popular drugs, the chemical compound nitrous oxide, commonly referred to as laughing gas. And I can buy this at a store. No ID check, no prescription needed. When I started this story, I wanted to find the pieces to the puzzle to understand Marissa Polite's $745 million wrongful death lawsuit. What I found is an addictive drug that is taking over America by infiltrating retail stores using intellectually dishonest loopholes. Today, I'm going to show you that laughing gas is nothing to laugh about. Before you can understand Marissa's $745 million case, you need to understand the history of nitrous oxide. Discovered in 1772 by English chemist Joseph Priestley, nitrous oxide was produced by heating iron fillings with nitric acid and collecting the gas. Priestley noted nitrous oxide's ability to support combustion. Even to this day, nitrous oxide is used in high-performance vehicles to boost engine output. You may have seen nitrous oxide referred to as NOS in the Fast and Furious franchise. But the world quickly discovered nitrous oxide had other purposes. In the late 1790s and early 1800s, scientist Humphrey Davy hosted a number of parties where nitrous oxide was inhaled for its euphoric effects. These gatherings often included members of the British upper class and intellectuals, making them some of the first instances where nitrous oxide was used for entertainment. Nitrous oxide became somewhat of a novelty amongst the wealthy and intellectual circles. This sparked a trend of so-called laughing gas parties where guests would inhale the gas and experience its effects, including laughter, euphoria, and sometimes hallucinations. However, it was not until the latter half of the 19th century that nitrous oxide would widely become recognized and utilized for its anesthetic properties in medical and dental procedures, transitioning from a recreational novelty to an important tool in medicine. And by the 1930s, nitrous oxide had begun changing the food industry as well. It was discovered that when mixed with heavy cream, nitrous oxide facilitated an airy texture leading to the invention of instant whipped cream. Which brings us to how laughing gas went mainstream. Until the 1950s, whipped cream dispensers were only available commercially. You'd have a big bulky tank of nitrous oxide that was not easily movable. But in the same decade, whipped cream chargers as we know them today were introduced. By the 1960s, nitrous oxide chargers were placed in food-related stores all across America. The largest name to produce these chargers was named Whippet. And as Whippet started infiltrating grocery stores across America, people started figuring out that if you put these little cartridges in empty whipped cream dispensers and inhale, you just have laughing gas, a process which earned the name Whippets. By the 1990s, Whippets quickly became a popular party drug because inhaling laughing gas offers a cheap and effective high. The high that laughing gas causes is quick, lasting only about 30 seconds. And it's easy to be secretive about, as compared to alcohol or marijuana, when you could potentially be impaired for hours. And over the past 30 years, we have seen a change, as the market cap for nitrous oxide has grown to be an estimated $1.47 billion in 2023, we started seeing whippets being sold out of more than just stores like a Restaurant Depot or a Williams Sonoma. In today's world, a substantial amount of whippet sales actually come from places like smoke shops and the internet. In fact, I'm about to walk into a smoke shop right now and buy whippets, which leads us to the next piece of the puzzle. How is this legal? Okay. And then I'm just gonna buy it. All right, he's purchasing drugs. Because nitrous oxide is not considered a federally controlled substance, nor is it illegal per se in any state, it can be sold so long as it's for a legitimate purpose. And I say that sarcastically because clearly there is some intellectual dishonesty going on here. When I went into the smoke shop, I was able to buy the whipped cream dispenser and the whippets themselves. And if you look at the packaging, they are littered with pictures of coffee, whipped cream, strawberries, pies, etc. But that's clearly what they are not being sold for. And the most obvious point I can make, other than the fact that they are literally being sold out of a smoke shop, is that the smoke shop only sells the dispenser and the whippets, but not the heavy cream needed to make whipped cream. These are being sold in order to be inhaled. While some states do have restrictions on where whippet sales can occur, many don't like Missouri. In the states that do have regulation, it appears to be loosely enforced. For instance, in Texas, whippets are considered an abusable, volatile chemical. And as such, the only requirement is that a business selling whippets has to post a warning sign. As a result of these policies, stores that have nothing to do with whipped cream sell whippets, and it's growing the market. 
with the projections that the nitrous oxide market cap will reach $3.19 billion by 2033. Now, to be fair, this number does include many of the legitimate purposes of nitrous oxide, but clearly, Whippet makers are getting around what little restrictions there are by slapping some pictures of whipped cream and a disclaimer on the packaging. The question is, is it okay to sell a substance that has a legitimate purpose for another reason? Well, we're starting to see some lawsuits take up this issue, starting with the case of Marissa Polite. Marissa Polite was killed in Missouri on October 18, 2020, after she was struck by Trenton Geiger, a driver who passed out behind the wheel while high on whippets. At the scene, authorities found both used and unused Whippet cartridges in Geiger's car. Based on this information, you would think Trenton is at fault for Marissa's death. He hit a woman while high, he's to blame, end of story, right? Well, that's not the case. In the wrongful death lawsuit filed by Marissa's estate, two other defendants were sued. The Coffin Cardinal, the smoke shop that sold Trenton Geiger the Whippets, and United Brands, Coffin Cardinal's Whippet supplier. Polite's lawyer sued under a product defect theory. To prove a product defect, you have to show in Missouri that a product is in an unreasonably dangerous condition when put to a reasonably anticipated use. Johnny Simon is the lawyer who represented the estate of Marissa Polite. Some would argue that the disclaimer on the packaging, which states that whippets are made for food and beverage preparation only, absolves the defendants from any liability. However, we must examine the greater context. In order to prove a product defect theory in Missouri, the relevant question is, did whippets being sold out of a smoke shop create an unreasonably dangerous condition for their reasonably anticipated use? It was more of a, if you're selling it as an inhalant, it is defective, right? So it comes down to the reason that they're selling it. And if they're selling it as an inhalant, if the jury decides that, then everyone agrees it's defective. Because how can they not? When I went to the smoke shop, I was able to purchase both the Whippet dispenser and the Whippet canisters themselves. Really, the only question I was asked is, would I like a 24 or a 50 pack? And just for reference, there were enough Whippets in that store to make whipped cream for the entire state of Texas, which is strange since they didn't sell any heavy cream at all. But it's like, okay, look, no one would have a, people would have a problem with suing Procter & Gamble, someone eats one of their Tide Pods, but what if they're selling it at candy stores, you know? Does that change your mind? It's like, oh, of course, right? What if they're selling it in toy stores? You know, you'd have a little bit of a problem with it. At the start of this video, I told you that this case resulted in a $745 million verdict. But that's not the most interesting part. It was the percentages of fault the jury assigned. In the law, fault is a spectrum. A jury's asked to assign a percentage of liability to all parties involved adding up to 100%. What the jury found in this case seems crazy until you understand the greater context. Now, at this point, a lot of people might be saying, hey, Trenton Geiger was a drug addicted kid who was high behind the wheel. That caused the death of Marissa Polite. But if we take a step back, there were businesses that were aiding, abetting, and profiting off of Geiger's addiction. So the defendants might not come out and expressly say that they knew their product was being used as an inhalant, but the law doesn't require express knowledge. The relevant question is, did the defendants know, or should they have known, that their product was being used as an inhalant? To prove that, we look for things like, did the company have noticed that their product was being misused? They were getting emails from parents, but they ignored those. I mean, saying, hey, I, I found one of these in my kid's car, uh, bought it at a smoke shop. What do you want me, I'll, I'll, I need to return it to you. You shouldn't be doing this. And you'd, you'd see internal responses, Tom, like that just said, like, ha ha, uh, let us help him. He wants us to help parent his bad kid. And I'm like, my goodness. Let's still continue to give the defendants the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they were aware of a few bad apples. That doesn't necessarily mean that they knew that there was an epidemic of people using whippets as a recreational inhalant, right? I went out and found via LinkedIn, actually, a former employee of United Brands who managed their warehouse. And he was willing to give a deposition. And he gave an estimate that some 75% of their sales were to smoke shops and head shops. So an estimated 75% of United Brands Missouri Whippet sales were to smoke shops. 
At the very least, you could argue that they were turning a blind eye. On the other hand, there's a very compelling case that they were acting as a legal drug dealer, essentially replacing the quintessential back alley drug deal with a store that sells large quantities of an addictive drug that is unregulated and easily accessible. After hearing all of the evidence, a jury found that Coppin Cardinal and United Brands were mostly at fault for the death of Marissa Polite finding the two parties liable under both a negligence and strict product liability theory, meaning they believed that selling whippets out of a smoke shop created an unreasonably dangerous condition for their reasonably anticipated use. The jury found Coffin Cardinal and United Brands to be 20% and 70% at fault, respectively. These companies put revenues and profits over safety and consumer protection. The jury awarded the estate of Marissa Polite $20 million in compensatory damages. In punitive damages, the jury fined Coffin Cardinal $25 million and United Brands a whopping $700 million. United Brands has since filed for bankruptcy and Coffin Cardinal hopefully has stopped the sale of Whippets out of their store. And I say hopefully because despite the attorneys for Coffin Cardinal claiming otherwise, there is some evidence to suggest that they were selling products after this verdict. And the smoke shop had said under oath that they had stopped selling the stuff by the time this kid had, had bought it, for, said he bought it from the store. But in my last case, I had sent a private investigator just fortuitously, I didn't know about this case, to this particular store to buy nitrous the month before this happened. So in the deposition of the, of the corporate rep, he's like, yep, raising his right hand, I, we stopped selling the stuff in 2019. He couldn't have bought it from us didn't buy it from us. And I'm like, so what you're telling all of us is that under oath, you did not have this product on your shelf in 2020. And he's like, yep. And then I played this video showing it's right on their shelf. And he's like, oh yeah, I guess we were selling it. I'm like, well, that that's one of the things that we did at trial uh, that I really think was the nail in the coffin. I mean, it was just, this is, this is it for people because their lawyer stood up an opening and said, you know, we stopped selling this stuff after we got sued by Mr. Simon. You know, he handled another case against us. And so we learned our lesson. And when he said that, I was like, okay. Uh, and I hired a, a private investigator to go buy as much product as they could of their brand from any smoke shop in Missouri. And at the end of the trial and rebuttal, I put on, you know, with their one of their employees, we really established what you're telling the jury is that we would not be able to get in our car today and go buy these. That's what you're telling us. Then they could start having, they're like, well, like, um, not exactly. Cause what, what they ended up doing is they created like a, a middleman in between them. Like they just created in-state distributor who then distributes. So it's same stuff. And at the, in rebuttal argument, we wheeled in uh, like, I mean, 20,000 nitrous oxide chargers that we had bought in two days, just like, and dumped them out on the floor. And people were just like, okay, you know. As of February, 2024, there appears to be no safeguards or laws preventing the sale of whippets for illicit use in Missouri. Will there be? Should there be? How many more accidents, lawsuits, and bankruptcies need to happen before lawmakers address the issue? At what point does safety matter more than profits? Are we just gonna let whippet sales continue to expand in the retail market in an unregulated fashion? Are lawyers going to have to continue to regulate through lawsuits or are lawmakers going to step in? If you want to watch my entire interview with Johnny Simon, it's on my podcast channel, Lawsuit Review. Make sure you hit the subscribe button with notifications on so you don't miss any future investigation. Thanks for watching.